Can you believe the fascinating history of St. Augustine in Florida? Founded in 1565, the town is the oldest occupied area in the United States. It is believed Juan Ponce de Leon founded Florida in 1513 when he claimed the territory as part of the Spanish crown. The Spanish would try to settle Florida several times, which all failed. Until the arrival of Don Pedro Menendez, who would utilize his military knowledge to try to settle Florida once again. The town was founded by Spanish Admiral Pedro Menendez de Aviles, who would become the first governor of Florida. The town would be named St. Augustine based on the Spanish settlers seeing the land on the feast day of St. Augustine. St. Augustine would be a very important city for the Spaniards. It would be designated as the capital of Spanish Florida for over 200 years. The main goal of the Spanish crown was to force the French Huguenot colonists out of Florida that established the outposts at Fort Caroline around present-day Jacksonville. They believed that the French base posed a threat to the Spanish territorial claims in Florida. They also wanted to protect their Spanish treasure fleet. They also wanted to expel the French Protestants so that they could spread Catholicism. One of the first things the Spanish crown would do is utilize their Jesuit priests who were among the initial settlers. The Spanish would try to force Christianity on the Native American tribe in the location and were able to peacefully coexist, which would allow for stability in the region, unlike other places in the New World where clashes would occur. This would make St. Augustine the center of Spanish power in the New World. They had very few enemies after forcing the French out and living peacefully with the natives. They would be able to build their military in the area as well as grow their location with homes and businesses. They began to be a thriving colony in the region. However, the Spanish in the region would face their biggest challenge on May 28, 1586. This was during the beginning of the Anglo-Spanish War. The English would send their privateer, Sir Francis Drake, to burn and destroy St. Augustine. The governor would tell all his civilians to flee the town. Drake would seize several of the weapons, as well as take some of the Spanish treasure. Sir Francis Drake would leave St. Augustine after burning the settlement down to the ground, showing them the power of his 1,000 men. After this occurred, the Spanish people of St. Augustine would rebuild the town. The Spanish living in the area would have more and more frequent battles and interactions with the English colonies, specifically after they established colonies in the Carolinas and then later Georgia. This meant the English were closer to them than ever. They would also clash with pirates as well, having them raid the city several times. The town of St. Augustine would have their areas attacked several times from British, pirates, and even Native Americans over the years after rebuilding the city. Due to this, they wanted to be prepared for the future. They needed to increase their military and their ability to protect the town. By 1672, the residents of the town would build the famous Castillo de San Marcos, which today is the oldest masonry fort in the U.S. If you ever visited St. Augustine, you probably have toured this fort, and you have probably agreed the massive size of it is quite amazing. There is a reason that it still stands to this day, as it was a source of power and strength for the people who lived there. The reason behind the Spanish building was to avoid issues from pirates or enemies in the future, especially with the memory of what Sir Francis Drake did to them. They also wanted to defend their trade routes within the Atlantic Ocean. The Castillo de San Marcos was ready for its biggest challenger when the British decided to launch an attack from their base in the Carolinas in 1702. The British brought a siege that would last for around two months. The British launched an extreme attack from the sea, however they were unable to take the newly built fort. When unable to take over the fort and declare victory over the Spanish in St. Augustine, the British would once again go into town and burn it down. In August 1706, the British worked with the Native Americans to continue to attack the Spanish Florida region, destroying everything north of St. Augustine. The British would still continue to take St. Augustine and fail several more times during the 1700s. Most famously, they faced one of their strongest attacks by the British in Georgia. But once again, they failed to take the fort, which proved the strength of the Spanish. One thing to note about St. Augustine is during this time period, they also became a safe haven for escaped slaves from the British colonies. The English actually hated the area for the fact that escaped slaves were given freedom by the Spanish government in the area as long as they declared allegiance to the King of Spain and took on the Catholic religion. The northern region of St. Augustine became the first legally free community of former slaves. After years of defending St. Augustine, it would all be for naught. Florida was given to the British in the Treaty of Paris in 1763. This ended the French and Indian War, handing Florida over to the British after years of trying. 
Though this would only last a short period of time because after the American Revolution, the new combined colonies would hand Florida back to the Spanish for their loyalty for American independence. However, St. Augustine would look very different during this time because of new settlers from the Mediterranean island of Menorca who had a failed colony from New Smyrna. Due to the happenings in Europe from the late 1700s into the early 1800s, Spain began to lose interest in their overseas colonies. Spain realized they needed to focus more on the protection of their people within their own hemisphere. From the Treaty of Adams Onus and Transcontinental Treaty, it would eventually give complete control of Florida to the United States. They would eventually take control over the Castillo de San Marcos, using it for the United States Army, renaming it to Fort Marion. Famously, during the United States Civil War, Florida joined the Confederacy, but the Union would occupy St. Augustine thus making it one of the few places in the South where President Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation had an impact, as it would free the slaves and after the war they would have land leased to them. After the Civil War, Florida as a whole became a larger destination for travel and vacation, however St. Augustine would become a leader in this. Henry Flagler, who the college in St. Augustine would be named after, would begin investing in this area. Henry gained his wealth being a partner of John D. Rockefeller and saw the potential that St. Augustine had. In 1887, he began building hotels in the area. What's interesting about this investment and construction is what became the Florida style we know today. After building the hotels, the area became a tourist destination for Americans, specifically the wealthy. The rich would have their way with the area for years, up until highways began development. Once this happened, it opened up more opportunity for the regular person to visit the region for vacation. This was the first area in Florida that would make up their economy to this day. Investors and business people realized the tourism business had amazing potential. You could even say without St. Augustine, there would be no Disney World, no Universal, no Spring Break in Miami, and no large festivals. St. Augustine opened the doors for the tourism economic boom for Florida. For its 400th anniversary, the town went through a huge restoration process that helped build back and restore over 60 buildings in the region, thus creating a new historical central part of St. Augustine. King Juan Carlos and Queen Sofia of Spain would actually make a visit to the region in 2001 to see the beautiful aspects of the town. To this day, St. Augustine has continued to be an important aspect of the Florida economy. It is one of the most visited town by tourists in the state, and they are truly the reason behind many of the tourist attractions you know today. But not just tourism, St. Augustine has had a long and important relevance for Americans and Spanish alike. Did you know the amazing history of this town? Have you ever visited it? Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and follow. Believable Truths?